So aphasia is a language problem that is caused by stroke or brain damage to the left uh, side of the brain. Uh, it's very common in the United States. Stroke is the number one cause of adult disability. So a large proportion of patients that do have a stroke end up with aphasia. It's just estimated that about a million people in the United States have aphasia today. And that can be realized in anything from having a difficult time coming up with words, um, the flow of speech being um, broken or non-fluent is what we call it, and also problems with understanding others while they speak to you and having problems with reading and writing. So the patients that we've been targeting with this are, have what we call non-fluent aphasia. They have very limited speech output. They will say anything from um, a single word to maybe sentences or phrases that are one, two, three words in length. Try to say what you can about eggs. 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 But I like e to... E e eggs. Ooh. I, I know what it is. I like the, to the eat eggs. And Their speech output is very severely limited, and what we have done is that we've been using audiovisual feedback uh, to enable them to speak fluently. And in short, that entails uh, showing them, and we used an iPod in our study, the mouth of a speaker and they listen at the same time via headphones, just like anybody would listen to their iPhone. And while looking at the face of the speaker or the mouth and listening at the same time, I they can actually mimic that speech in real time, which enables them then breakfast. to produce fluent speech. I like them because they are fast and easy. To make eggs and knit up and pan and burn some butter over medium heat. Um, this is a method I would say that has been around for a while, but it's never been studied systematically. I think that people that treat aphasia have used it in the past, but it's never been looked at uh, in any detailed way. It's important to keep in mind that those people who are so severely non-fluent have sustained very extensive brain damage. So there's never been a case, at least with us, where we've seen somebody who just went from not speaking at all after the training to the point that they could speak fluently following treatment. That would be pretty dramatic, but the brain just isn't, isn't capable of taking over that kind of recovery. So any kind of an improvement is a plus for these patients. We used to think that the right hemisphere took over function that was lost as a result of damage to the left hemisphere and as a result of aphasia. I'm not so sure that that's the case. Most of our research seems to show that the damaged parts of the left hemisphere uh, make new connections and thereby enable the person to speak uh, more fluently or, or decrease as far as their aphasia severity is concerned. So I would say that by making new connections, primarily in the left hemisphere, people see the greatest returning function.